Please be seated. So I have a late class on Monday nights, and usually I ride my bike home, but David ran into a taxi with our bike and bent the front fork. So I've been taking the subway. And so the other night, I came out of the, the red line stop at Davis Square at about 10.15 at night. Class had gone late. And I was walking up the bike path, and there were about six or seven of us walking, so I felt fairly safe. But it was night, and I'm a woman, and it's Somerville. So I turn off up, up the hill towards my particular part of the neighborhood, and there's one other person behind me now, nobody else, just me and this other person. And I can hear their feet, and I look behind me, and it's a fairly large man, dressed for work. He has a suit on, nice shoes. And he's fairly far behind me, and I'm feeling safe enough. So we continue up the hill, and I can hear his footsteps. And they're getting a little closer. So I walk a little faster, and he walks a little faster. And I walk even a little faster. I'm breathing heavier now, and he walks even a little faster. And I continue this fast pace, thinking for sure he can see how terrified I am. He can see as I walk faster and faster and faster. So he must be coming for me. There could be no other reason why he wouldn't respond to my fear. So he's coming faster, and I can hear his footsteps. And they're not only getting louder because they're getting closer, but in my mind, they're getting louder because he's walking with more purpose. He has a purpose, and it's me. And he comes up behind me, and my hands are in my pockets, searching for my keys, searching for my cell phone. And he's right on me, and he comes, and he passes me. And I can see that he has headphones in. <laughs> and his purpose is coming from the beat of his music. Regardless of his intent, my response as a woman, and I am almost certain the response of many, many other women, shows me that something is broken. Something is broken between men and women. Just like the protests, the people lying in the streets after Ferguson, Missouri, and after New York City, shows me that something is broken something between blacks and whites. Regardless of what we all think is the cause or the next steps, and I am sure we all represent many, many different opinions on that, something is broken. As I was reading about all this these last weeks, I was struck by the fact that in 2011, according to census data, the median wealth, the median not gross income, but wealth, was $6,300 in a black family and 100000 in an average white family. Something is broken. A black man without a high school education is more likely to be incarcerated than to be employed. Something is broken, regardless of what we each think is the cause or the next steps. Something is broken. It makes me uncomfortable to stand up here and to have to talk about this. It's hard to talk about these things. It's hard to talk about these things as a white person, especially upper middle class, highly educated white person. I've been really sad these last many weeks, fearful, sense of helplessness. I don't know even where to begin. Where do you begin with something that's so broken. So I approached our readings this week with all of those emotions. And I met the gospel and John the Baptist's call for a baptism of repentance and the forgiveness of sins. And I don't know about you, but when I hear the word repentance, I instantly shut down. <laughs> repentance to me represents guilt, represents blame, represents shame. But that's the sense that we have put to this word. The Greek word, metanoia, 
and its biblical usage has no sense of guilt or shame at all. It has an open, inviting sense of transformation. Some have translated it as a turning towards God. And according to Mark, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ is not just our baptism called into turning towards God, but if we were to go out a few more verses, Jesus' own baptism, a baptism of what one of my professors has called his plunge of solidarity in the Jordan River. The Jordan River, the river of life, the river of everyday life, People washed in the Jordan River. They bathed in the Jordan River. They took their water for cooking from the Jordan River. They even relieved themselves in the Jordan River. And where is our God to be found when we're trying to turn towards God and we want to know where he is? He is in the person of Jesus right in the middle of our lives, plunged, dripping wet, in solidarity with each of us. Those of us who are questioning, those of us who are uncomfortable, those of us who are angry, who feel helpless, who feel harmed, who feel oppressed, who need liberation, those of us who disagree with each other. Jesus is dripping wet in the middle of all of that. And so as we are called to turn towards God, recalling our own baptisms, we must remember that we have also been baptized into Christ's own baptism of solidarity with each other, this plunge of the waters of life. And so how in this Advent season when we live into these baptisms of repentance and solidarity, despite that society gives me the privilege as a white person of turning away from the pain in Ferguson and in New York, from the questions, from the awkwardness, turning off my Facebook, turning off my TV, and existing as I always have, because it's not my problem. Despite that society gives me that privilege, my baptism does not. My baptism calls me to look towards God who is right in the middle of that tension, who is asking me to question my own privilege, to question my own assumptions, to argue with each other, and to know that despite arguing and disagreeing, we are all in these waters, and we are all looking for Christ. So how will I, how will each of you this Advent season not only keep watch, but keep watching, keep engaged in this tension, keep engaged in this fear, keep engaged in this sense of helplessness, in what may feel like anger, keep engaged in what may be disagreement. How will you not set this aside? Because it's not our problem. How will you keep watch and keep watching? May we all wade into the waters of life with Jesus, our God, and take anew this plunge of solidarity. In the name of God. Amen. <laughs>